creatures on other planets might be lethal killers, just like here. Maybe they're coming here to plunder our world. They may be up there watching us, and we're the exhibit. Is the case of the little green men. Back in 1950, one of the world's leading physicists, Enrico Fermi, posed a simple question. If alien life is so probable, where is everyone? Why haven't aliens colonized the galaxy? The thing is, life needs to overcome a series of hurdles before it can become a spacefaring civilization. Life on Earth began at least 3.5 billion years ago in the form of single-celled organisms. We're talking bacteria, protozoa, archaea. The first hurdle to spacefaring is really basic. Living things need to evolve complexity. This took a long time. Complex multicellular creatures started to evolve only 1.5 billion years ago. It's only in the last 20 million years that some mammals started to evolve the brain power that we call intelligence. Even then, it was only about 2 million years ago that one of those mammals, a human ancestor, learned how to make tools and light fires. And it's only in the last 6,000 years that we've had the social cohesion to form civilizations so that we can share ideas and accumulate knowledge and pass that from generation to generation. Finally, it's only in the last 60 years that we've made our first small steps into space. So here on Earth, the journey from the start of life to the space age has taken 3.5 billion years. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. We're asking alien civilizations to make a similar journey, presumably over a similar length of time. But whenever I think of these hurdles, I always come back to the math. If only 1% of 1% of 1% of planets have gone down the same route, there would be 100,000 advanced civilizations in our galaxy alone. So there should be some alien civilizations out there somewhere. We'll just need to look a little harder. For me, it's a slam dunk that aliens really exist. The only challenge is finding them. In October 2017, we sent the first message we designed for advanced extraterrestrials. Of course, we don't know the aliens' language, so we used the universal language, math. Those two different tones represent a binary code, simplest numbering system. We aimed this transmission at Leuton star. In 2017, we discovered that there is an Earth-like planet orbiting within its habitable zone, which means it could potentially have life. Now, Leuton star is 12 light years from Earth, so that means the earliest we could receive response is 2042. Other targets are much, much farther away. So realistically, it could take hundreds or even thousands of years to get a reply back. So if we want to have even a simple conversation with an alien civilization, we need to make sure we're around for a long, long time to talk. When we imagine aliens coming to Earth, we imagine they're coming to destroy us. 
I mean, that's what science fiction movies tell us all the time. And the reality is completely different. Think about it logically. What would they want from us? Maybe they're coming here to plunder our world. Columbus came to the New World to find spices. The conquistadors came to get gold. And it didn't turn out well for the indigenous people in either case. But what is there that super advanced aliens might want to plunder from us? What about water? All life needs it. We used to think it was rare in the universe. Now we know it's pretty common. In fact, in 2020, a NASA study showed that of the 4,000 planets we know of, many of them are water worlds. Maybe they want to harvest us for food. Get real. At best, we'd be indigestible, given that we have completely different biologies. In fact, it's incredibly difficult to imagine what we have on Earth that is so rare that an alien would come all this way to get it. To me, the most compelling reason is curiosity. I suspect aliens, if they're super advanced, are also going to be super curious. Curiosity and progress, they go together like donuts and jelly. Let's suppose that aliens are curious about us and they want to know more about what we bipedal apes are up to. So this is called the zoo hypothesis, right? And, and that makes sense. We're in the zoo and they're watching us. Well, why don't we see them? Why don't they make themselves known to us? Well, it's not that they're shy, necessarily. It's more that they're so technologically advanced, they don't want to freak us out. This idea comes up again and again, especially in science fiction, right? Non-interference. It's kind of like the uh, prime directive in Star Trek. And the whole point is, right, they're observing us. It's like a scientific experiment. They want to see how we behave naturally. And if we know they're out there, we're going to change the way we work. Well, there's a variation that I think is pretty interesting, and that is, yeah, they're not just watching us. They're actually changing us. They're interfering with us on purpose. They have some goal, something that we need to achieve that they have in mind, and they're guiding us in that direction. Maybe there's some level of technology that we're supposed to achieve, and then when we do that, they'll make themselves known to us. Until then, we're just here going about our business in blissful ignorance. Even if aliens have the means and motive to travel across space, it doesn't really make sense for them to travel themselves. Living things just aren't built for the vacuum of space. Zero gravity, high radiation, freezing temperatures. Space travel takes its toll on the body and mind. So increasingly, we send machines instead. These machines can do the tasks that we set them in space without us having to be there. They can stand in for humans. I've been involved in designing robots to explore space for 10 years now. Robots like the Mars rover. This Mars rover is a laboratory on wheels. It's got a two meter drill, stereoscopic cameras, ground penetrating radar, and it can land and navigate on Mars all by itself. 
Unlike astronauts, robots don't need food, water, oxygen, or a pressurized suit. They don't get tired or homesick, and they only need a one-way ticket. Really, why send humans when robots can do the same job so much more easily? It just doesn't make sense. Robots like these would need to be able to think independently and problem solve for themselves. They'd probably need to self-repair. They might even need to self-replicate. They'd need to be way beyond any level of AI we've achieved so far here on Earth. It's reasonable to think that aliens would come to the same conclusion and send their own advanced robots through space. So when and if contact does come, it's likely that it would be not with an alien itself, but with an advanced alien AI. ET AI. For us, intelligence is about acquiring knowledge, then using it to perform complex tasks. We humans like to think that we are pretty good at it. After all, we've built a very complex world. But perhaps intelligent machines could use their intelligence to become super intelligent. And that's the great fear, that no matter what safeguards are put into their programs, there will come a point where what a machine wants and what we want are no longer the same things. The machines will simply take over. If that is true of machines designed by humans, then what if we encounter machines designed by aliens? I think we might be to them like a bug is to us. I don't hate bugs. I don't set out to kill them. But if they get in the way of my primary goal, like walking across the grass, it's too bad. I barely give it a second thought. That's the fear about alien AI. If it comes to Earth, or we run into it on our travels in space, we wouldn't stand a chance. It's nothing personal or malicious. But if we were in their way, we'd simply be swept aside. Even if there's no alien invasion, it's ridiculous to think that we're alone in the universe. Out of the million, billion, trillion stars, some of them have to be the home of intelligent life. As Carl Sagan said, the universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space. <laughs>